Hello, I'm Dr. Ann Davis, and this is a series of very short little teachings, but they're all on one topic. We're going to explore the scriptures together. I'm going to take you into a depth of scripture, and we're going to look at how we come into the presence of God. How do we approach God? How do we grow in our relationship with Him? And we're going to do that by searching in the scriptures. Now, I call this series climbing Jacob's ladder and you remember Jacob's dream where the angels are ascending and descending uh, from heaven and up at the top of the ladder is God himself so that's the imagery of what we're doing in this series now this first little session I call reach for the sky because it's based on God's commandment to us to be holy says God for I am holy you notice here that that commandment is going to appear in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now, the Old Testament, I used to call it the Old Testament, I don't anymore, I call it the Hebrew Scriptures now, because what I have found in my studies is first that the New Testament is very Hebraic in its nature. After all, the authors were themselves, for the most part, Jews, and the New Testament hadn't been written, so for them the Holy Scriptures were the Hebrew Scriptures of the Old Testament. And then the second thing is that I have discovered through all of my studies that it's not two separate testaments, but it's all one connected message. So what we're going to see is that God's commandment to Israel, we're going to look at that first, and then we're going to see that it's carried right over into the, the New Testament uh, to believers in Yeshua. So let's take a look at the first one in Leviticus. In Leviticus, God says to the children of Israel, he says, I am the Lord your God, consecrate yourselves therefore and be holy for I am holy and you shall not make yourselves unclean now this is clearly talking to Israel but let's take a, a look at it here there are a couple of words I want you to notice first of all it says to consecrate yourselves and what does that mean it means to make yourself holy well how do you make yourself holy the wonderful thing about scripture is that it's going to give us this contrast okay make yourselves holy and don't make yourselves unclean. So you see in the contrast an understanding of holy. You're holy if you get rid of all that unclean stuff in your life. Well, what's the unclean stuff? The unclean stuff is the sins. It's anything to do with worldly ways that is, is not godly. That's what, that's what it means. Now, for the children of Israel, God had given them the law. So they had all these laws to help them learn how to walk in ways that were clean, not unclean. Let's take a look now at some of the categories. These are not laws themselves. These are some of the categories, and there are more categories than this. I'm just giving you an idea. Um, the uh, sages um, uh, concluded that there were 613 laws in the law, and you see one category was relationship with God, another times and seasons, another was the Torah, signs and symbols, and uh, love and brotherhood wars. These are all topics, and there were laws under each of these topics. Now, I've highlighted the one that says dietary laws. Dietary laws were the things that you could eat and not eat. And the reason that the sages concluded that these laws were connected with being holy or being unholy is because God had given a list of unclean uh, animals and you couldn't eat the unclean you could only eat the clean now the tradition of course is is called keeping kosher or uh, another word for it is kashrut it's a tradition of kashrut now what's important for us is not the, the kosher laws but the principle uh, Jesus was always talking about the greater principle the higher principle well the principle is that we are to separate ourselves from what is unclean and so that we can become holy that's the principle now what I want to show you is that it's not just for Israel it's also for, for believers in Yeshua so let's take a look now at first Peter this is uh, the epistle of first Peter and 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 Peter cites Leviticus Peter says look it's written you shall be holy because I am holy so so this is telling believers in Yeshua that you also should be holy as God is holy now one important principle when we do these things is that we always have to see a verse in its context if we don't see it in its context we take it out of its context we jump to conclusions and we end up with this you know all these different interpretations we don't want to do that so let's take a look in the context of this this particular uh, citation Peter starts as obedient children 
do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance. Now you recognize the unholy, the ways of the world, and I draw your attention to the word conformed. That word means to be shaped. And I've got a picture here of a potter shaping a pot on a potter's world. And it's also talking about, you know, don't be shaped by the world. The world is going to try to shape you. And if it does, it's shaping you into what Paul calls your former lusts, <laughs> you know, and which were yours in your ignorance before you came to, to Jesus or to Yeshua and, and came to know him. So, but let's keep going here. This is the context of, of be holy as, as God is holy. And look what, what it is next. It's the little word but. The little word but is going to give us a contrast. So we've just seen the ways of the world and the world is trying to shape us, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. So the way you behave, the way you live should be holy because it is written, you shall be holy uh, because I am holy. So let's just summarize this little brief teaching. Uh, we're taking a look at the whole concept of holiness and we see that God wants us to be holy. Now we don't have to be holy to belong to him. We belong to him. You know, the children of Israel belong to him because they were children of Israel. The uh, Gentiles belong to him because they believe in, in God's son, Yeshua, the, the Messiah. Uh, but, but once we belong to him, God says, okay, you know what's next? What's next is I want you to be holy. And why does he want us to be holy? So we can come into his presence and have that wonderful relationship with him. So in the next session, what I'm going to do is we're going to take a look at this story of Jacob's ladder. And I'm going to show you some of the symbolism of it because it's not just a story. It's filled with all kinds of this wonderful symbolism. And when we go into the next little session, we're going to get closer to our relationship with God.